So today we're going to start with a procedural map generation type, uh, often called as a random walk or a drunkard walk. It starts at one point and then it picks a random direction and then it just does that over and over again and it changes uh, what's going to be the walls into the floor. So take a look what we have here in Godot. It's basically just a, a tile a tile map with a tile set. Uh, I added a camera just to center the map a little bit better, but the tile map is pretty straightforward. You add a photo down here, you add a couple single tiles, and you end up with just two separate tiles, one that's going to be the walls or the rocks, and one that will be the floor. And as you can see, there's nothing actually in the window, because we're going to create it all procedurally in the script. So when we go to the script, we have tile map. We start with enumerating the tiles. Uh, we're going to have 0 and 1. That's going to correspond to uh, the tile map that we were talking about, 0 and 1. you got to make sure you match up the one that you want to be the rock uh, and the floor in the correct order in this enumeration, because uh, otherwise it'll be backwards. We have a few variables that are uh, just the map size that you want, a vector 2. We're going to uh, have multiple drunkards walking around, so we're going to create an array just to hold all of the different uh, walkers. We're going to have a chance to spawn a new walker, because we're going to start with one in the middle, and then we're going to branch out from there. And then the percentage to fill is how much of the map we actually want to be filled up with floors before we want it to stop. So like, let's actually skip down to the ready real quick. We're going to just start by randomizing everything. And then we're going to just loop through the whole map and set the whole thing to rock. Uh, like I said, when you enumerate and then you use it this way, uh, the tiles dot rock, that's basically just saying zero. It's in the first slot. And that way, in the tile set, you want to use the zero uh, tile. The name technically doesn't actually matter. Those could be anything. What's important is the, the place in the enumeration and the number in the tile set. So after you set cell in every x and y direction, of your map size, then we're going to move the walkers. So going back to this class that I created, I tried it with vector twos uh, and just keeping a track of it in an array, and it didn't seem to work very well. I don't really know why, but uh, I decided to make a class, just a reference. Really, all it's keeping is its position. All classes have an init function that is called and is passed a variable if you pass it in when you create the new uh, instance of it, which we'll show you down here. So really, like I said, all it has is the position that we're keeping track of. And I, I kind of like this better anyway, in case you want to make more variables in the future. Uh, you can have different variants of this to make your map different ways. Uh, so anytime that I'm going to be using a while loop. I always use iterations just to make sure it, it never becomes an infinite loop. Uh, it almost never gets this high, but I always just make sure we have an iterations variable that will go up by one, just like a timer, uh, just to make sure it doesn't crash. And then uh, we'll have the position. Like I said, we're just going to start in the middle of the map this time. You can change that too to be random if you like, but I'm just starting in the middle to keep things simple. And then we'll create a variable that will be a new walker in that same position, and we will append it to the array. Uh, that way we can loop through that array and move the walkers. So, like I said, we have our iterations, and then we, uh, for walk in total walkers, which the first time through would only be one, but that's okay, because We'll probably have more before the end of it. 
uh, we'll pick just a number random or a random number uh, 0 to 3 and that'll be the new add to the direction that we're going and then we'll make sure it doesn't go outside the map and I'm clamping it to 1 and then the map size minus 2 to make sure there's a border of just one uh, one space around the whole outside because I don't want there to actually be floor at the edge of the map. I want to make sure it's an enclosed um, an enclosed cavern or whatever this is going to be. So then we just set the cell each time that we iterate through and move uh, to the floor. And here is how we see if we're going to spawn a new walker. And I don't want there to be more than 10 walkers, so I have just a random a random float. If it's less than the variable I set at the top, uh, then we'll start a new walker in the same position. So uh, and then we'll add that to the array. And then I cut the chance to delete the walker in half because I want it to keep going. I don't want this to take forever when I'm going through. Uh, and this part really, um, like I said, the iterations go up by one, but the yield here is just so you can see it when we play, it go one by one, opposed to just doing the whole map and then popping up when it's done thinking. I kind of want to show you guys what it looks like in the process. So how do we know when we're done, though? If count floors is a little helper function just to see how many floor tiles there actually are. So you just, again, make a new variable, loop through every cell, and instead of set cell, you get cell to see what it is. And if it is the floor, you just count it. And you return that number, that variable that you counted. And then you just divide it, see if it's the percentage. And if it once it gets to that percentage, then you just break the loop. And it's done. And this is what it looks like.